So here's one of the classic physics force diagram problems that you guys will see. Okay, it's an inclined plane where a mass is placed on an inclined plane. Now, sometimes it's told you're told that this is a frictionless surface. Sometimes you're told the force of friction. In this case, I'm going to tell you that the velocity of this mass, while it's moving down the ramp, is constant. Okay, so the first thing I guess we have to do is realize what that tells us. Okay. And we've had significant conversation about this. When someone says the velocity is constant or the acceleration is zero, that tells us then that the sum of all of the forces is zero. Okay, they all add up and they all cancel out. Now, again, we talk about how this really for our purposes can mean two things. It can mean our forces up will equal our forces down. And it also could mean our forces left will equal our forces right, okay? And so now that we know that, that allows us to do a lot of work with this force diagram, okay? So that said, the first force that I draw in every time, all the time, goes straight down to, cent to the center of the earth. That's our force of gravity, okay? This is another one of those situations where even though it's at an incline, it is on a surface, okay? And so there is going to be a normal force that acts perpendicular out of that surface. So we will call this our normal force. Okay? And the last force that we know we have present, because the velocity is constant, there has to be a force causing that constant velocity. That force is our force of friction, okay? And so seemingly we have very little information to go off of. We were given a mass, we were given an angle, and we were told the velocity is constant. So I guess we just need to take this problem and go where it allows us to go. So first and foremost, if the force of gravity, I'm sorry, if the mass is 2.5, then that means the force of gravity is going to be that mass times little g. So it's going to be 2.5 times 9.8. which gives us 24.5. So our force of gravity is 24.5 newtons. I can write that in right now. Kind of running out of space here. That's all right, though. Okay, so that's all I have right now. But again, I have one of my forces that's at an angle, okay? And as it turns out, anytime something is at an angle, in this class, we're going to want to break it up into x and y components. So this is your force of gravity. It's in the mostly vertical direction, so we're going to call that force of gravity in the y direction. And then we also have a force of gravity that's pulling it down the ramp from right to left. We're going to call that force of gravity in the x direction. Okay. Now, again, that doesn't do us a ton of good until we take a look and realize that the triangle that I just drew here is similar to this triangle here. Meaning that if this angle is 20 degrees, so is that one. Okay. And so now that I have my hypotenuse, I have my angle, I can find my force of gravity in the x direction, I can find my force of gravity in the y direction. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now that I have the trig. So force of gravity in the x direction, that's opposite, so that's going to be sine of 20 is going to be equal to my opposite FGX over my hypotenuse 24.5. So sine of 20 times 24.5 will give me an FGX of 8.379. We'll round that to 8.38. Do the same for my y, it's the adjacent side, so this is going to be cosine of my angle, 20. It's going to be equal to my adjacent fgy over 24.5. So my fgy is going to end up being cosine of 20 times 24.5. I get 23.02, so we'll call that 23.02 newtons. Okay, so, so far I have my FGY, I have my FGX of 8.38, okay, I have my force of gravity 
Now, the other thing that we have because of this, and back to the beginning, if it's constant velocity, my ups equal my downs, my lefts equal my rights. So what that means is my up, force normal, will equal my down, force of gravity. So I can go ahead, because those are the only up and down forces. I can go ahead and say, look, my force normal then must be 23.02 newtons. At the same time, then, my lefts will equal my rights. So this force, my left, will equal this force, my rights. And so I can then say this 8.38 newtons for my FGX is the same as my 8.38 newtons for my force of friction because those two are equal and opposite. So this is how we would do an inclined plane problem with a constant velocity or no acceleration telling us that all the forces cancel.